My largest position is currently Brookfield's Corporation, and despite the stock not really doing much over the past year, and still being down 30% from its all-time highs, I continue holding and adding more. The question I have been getting is why? Why hold on to the stock when so many others in the market have been running to new highs and seeing such strong growth? It's a fair question, and the answer is because Brookfield's underlying business continues to grow. And as an investor, I look to the business to make my investment decisions instead of what the stock price is doing in the short term. Additionally, when a business is growing but its stock isn't, I believe it means the stock is becoming cheaper and creating an opportunity, which is what I believe is currently happening with Brookfield now. Brookfield has had many recent updates that I don't really see shared anywhere either, but as a follower and investor of this business, I like to keep myself informed and up to date with what is going on with the business. So in today's video, I am going to share with you the information that I have recently found on Brookfield. Before we get into the video though, I want to let you all know that Stock Unlock just released Questrade and E-Trade brokerage account linking. So if you use Questrade or E-Trade as your broker, then you can now link your accounts directly to Stock Unlock's portfolio tracker, which will allow you to analyze your portfolios in much more depth, see all of your dividend information and breakdowns, and even see insider buying and selling on the stocks you own. By using the link in my description, you can connect your brokerage and try out Stock Unlock's portfolio tracker for 14 days for completely free. But with that being said, let's now hop into the video. I recently found an article from August 28th about Brookfield looking to invest more money in a range of opportunities in the Indian economy. Brookfield is looking to grow its $25 billion asset portfolio in the country even further. Brookfield also believes India has a big opportunity amid the global supply chain shortages that are currently going on. Further down in this article it also says, India has an ambitious climate transition agenda. For India, there's so much going right, so many opportunities and so many drivers. Obviously the digital economy is hugely important and a big comparative advantage for India. The digital economy is, effectively, a clean economy. I mean that this is the mindset of major digital companies. Many of them have 2030 net zero targets. Some have had net negative targets. I will say that in our conversations, actions and investments with companies around the world, major multinationals, when they're looking at new supply chains, new value chains, the first question is where they get their power from. And the only right answer is it's clean power. The manufacturing opportunity is enormous and with just the scale of 40 to 50 gigawatts a year. There is tremendous and tremendously growing opportunity and this isn't just about applying existing technologies in India. There is a lot of innovation. We're seeing innovation on the storage side and we'll see innovation on the manufacturing side. A different article says that India has surpassed its renewable energy target of 175 gigawatts by 2022 and is expected to reach 174 gigawatts by 2023. The country's renewable energy capacity is projected to grow to 280 gigawatts by 2025, accounting for 37% of the country's total energy supply. 280 gigawatts in renewable energy by 2025 is a compounded annual growth rate of 28% to India's renewable energy capacity, and Brookfield is looking to help fund these projects and capitalize on this massive growth. Brookfield's renewable assets under management are $3 billion in India, and they are looking to grow that. Their investments are helping India decarbonize, and they raised a specific transition fund called the Brookfield Global Transition Fund, which was $15 billion. All of that capital has been committed, and as those investments come through, they will remove emissions equivalent to those of New York City, London, and Toronto combined. 10% of that capital is also being invested in India, to further Brookfield's exposure to the country. Brookfield says we're one of the biggest foreign investors in India, and it's going to be bigger. We like it to be substantially bigger. It will be driven by a range of opportunities here. On the renewable side, in real estate, hospitality, infrastructure, and considering the explosive growth and demand for data infrastructure. So Brookfield is one of the largest foreign investors in India, and they want to be substantially larger through investing in all of these different sectors. Now, with that said, Brookfield announced on September 6th that it's going to be investing 1,500 crore or roughly $200 million into Leela Palace's hotels and resorts business. Gupta, who is an employee over at Brookfield, said in the current year the hotel chain is expected to post its best performance in the last three decades, alongside strong profit margins. EBITDA margins are also higher than ever in the company's history. And this success can be attributed to the alignment of incentives between the business owner and the management. In terms of international expansion, Gupta said the company has signed up a transaction in the Maldives 
and is also considering opportunities in markets such as London and the Middle East. With our investment in Lila, the company became global overnight. We have investments in 30 countries. Our investors are from various parts of the world, from Asia to the US and Europe. All of our reports go to those investors, so Lila truly became global under our ownership. As the Indian diaspora remains prominent on the global stage, authentic Indian brands like Lila have a promising trajectory. Over 35% of the portfolio is powered by renewable sources of energy, which were commissioned by us as well. So Brookfield is investing in the Indian hospitality sector, and working to bring its companies global and further even more growth. Additionally, Brookfield announced a partnership with Reliance Industries and Digital Realty to develop data centers across India. Reliance is a massively successful Indian conglomerate that has compounded at incredible rates over the past 20 years. In fact, Reliance has massively outperformed the S&P 500 and is now one of the largest companies in India. Digital Realty is also a massively successful business that specializes in building and operating data centers all over the world. Its stock has also outperformed the S&P 500 since its IPO in 2004. When you also factor in the dividends that DLR has paid, its outperformance of the S&P widens even more. Reliance and Digital Realty are high quality businesses that Brookfield is partnering with. And all three of these businesses have a very long history of incredible success. This article explains the partnership between these three companies in a little bit more depth too. The partnership will help us serve our enterprise and small and medium business clients with cutting edge plug and play solutions delivered from the cloud and lead their digital transformations and make them more competitive and efficient, said the CEO of Reliance. Data centers provide essential services and critical infrastructure to support the digitization that is taking place in every aspect of life in India. India is a mostly untapped market for the data center industry, driven by the rapid adoption of digital business models, the world's largest population, and a government that recognizes the role of technology for future economic development. Data center capacity in India is expected to increase multifold over the next few decades. So Brookfield is executing on exactly what they said they were going to do, and is now investing in building data centers across India to help grow the country's digital economy. I think that this is a great thing and should add tremendous growth to Brookfield's business for decades to come. I also found this video of a high up Brookfield employee discussing the current economic environment. So I want to play this video and I will pause it and explain some of it as we watch it. You've already done a lot. Are, are you still on the hunt for, for big transformative deals right now? Absolutely. And thank you for having me. I'd say as an industry as a whole, we're back to roll up your sleeves, private equity. You can't really count on... Um, purely uh, available or cheap financing or revenue growth to deliver your returns. You have to uh, generate those returns and create that growth yourself through operational improvements. And that's something that we as Brookfield have been doing for forever over the last 15 years. The private equity industry as a whole, its returns have come primarily from multiple expansion and revenue growth. For us, it's come from margin expansion. And so all of these examples you raise are examples of us being able to acquire businesses still and be active in this environment because we're really counting on our capability to run the businesses better. Ranjan is saying here that Brookfield does not rely on cheap financing or revenue growth to drive its returns. What it does is generate returns through acquiring businesses and unlocking their value through operational efficiencies. Basically, Brookfield buys businesses that it believes it can fix up and then run better and unlock the value through profit margin expansion and ultimately growing the company's profits. And Brookfield is still remaining active because it believes it's able to continue acquiring businesses and unlocking their value today. What happens to those who don't have the capacity to originate deals, to roll up their sleeves? What happens to those types of firms? So we are seeing um, the clients, our, our LPs, our institutional investors, our private wealth channels, uh, sovereign plans and pension plans, they are choosing fewer and fewer managers to manage their capital who have this capability. In a sense, you are seeing a consolidation in the industry, um, not so much a consolidation through m and I mean, some of that might happen, but it's early days, but a consolidation in the sense that the clients are choosing and creating the winners. And um, we're thrilled to be on the right side of that. It's, it's a, you know, there's two worlds out there. The uh, people often talk about the um, denominator effect or less capital available in markets, that's true. But as the pie is getting smaller, fewer people or fewer firms are getting a bigger piece of that pie. And uh, for us, I mean, 2022 is our best 
fundraising year ever. Hmm. Um, and I think 2023 is looking no different. Ranjan just said that while there's less capital flowing around in the global economy, clients are looking for the best asset managers to manage their capital. People are essentially looking for those with proven track records of investing and growing capital through all markets, and not just during bull markets or low interest rate environments. Therefore, funds are consolidating into the highest quality asset managers. So even though there's less total funds available, the capital is moving to fewer and fewer managers, which means that these managers are still able to grow and raise more money. He then says how Brookfield had a record year for fundraising in 2022, where it raised $100 billion, and is on track to have another record year in 2023. But if others in the industry are struggling to fundraise, could there be a liquidity issue? We saw a liquidity issue for VC. Yep. Um, we saw the ramifications of that with SVB, which hit the private equity industry too. Is private equity, again, maybe you're immune, but are other firms going to have a liquidity issue, not be able to put money into their companies to keep them going? I think uh, liquidity is um, scarce. It's available to those that have the capability and it's available in spades. But yes, as an overall industry, it's less available. I actually think it's a good thing. It creates a disciplined environment. You know, gone are the days of an auction with 45 bids, two preempts, and uh, I'd say, um, you know, some, some aggressive deal making. We're in a place now where it's very, very rational, very reasonable, and uh, groups like ourselves can benefit, and uh, we're very excited about it. Lastly, Ranjan says that there's less liquidity in the markets today, but that's actually a good thing. When interest rates were low and money was flowing around everywhere, Brookfield had to compete with dozens of other bidders and prices got to irrational levels. Now Brookfield is able to bid on assets at rational prices, which ultimately should increase Brookfield's long-term returns. In fact, Brookfield has been the most active asset manager so far in 2023, with over $50 billion of acquisitions so far this year. So they're putting their money where their mouth is and showing that they are the industry leader in value investing and deploying capital in down markets. A good example of a Brookfield investment is Atlantis Paradise in the Bahamas, which Brookfield is reported to be looking to sell. Brookfield acquired this asset in 2011 for $175 million and is now looking to sell it for $2.5 billion today. This is a compounded annual return rate of 25% on a significant sum of money. And this is exactly the type of thing that Brookfield is great at doing. So yes, Brookfield's stock may not have budged over the past year, and the rest of the market is currently outperforming the stock. But when I look at all of the moves that Brookfield is making, and how rational the business is investing its money for the long term, I think it will still turn out to be a great long term investment for me. I simply think it would be a mistake for me to sell this stock simply because its share price hasn't moved in a year, when the fundamentals of the business behind the stock are compounding and growing away. So let me know what you all think down in the comment section below, and let me know if you enjoyed this style of video. Also, if you are a Quest Trade or E-Trade user, then make sure to check out Stock Unlocks Portfolio Tracker by linking your brokerage accounts to it. Again, you can do this for totally free with a 14-day free trial. Also, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in some way, then please remember to leave a like on it because that really does help my channel grow and help me reach new audiences. Also, if you're new to the channel and you want to stick around and see more content like this, then please consider subscribing because that would be pretty awesome too. But with all of that being said, thank you all so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it, and I really hope to see you all again in my next video.